picked the wrong weight to quit sniffing glue. Well, this is it, kids. This is the chapter one on the Helios 650 Enterprise D build. My particular take on this build. Now, uh, let's get some stuff out of the way right away. There are other people building this. Good friends, people building this. Uh, Andrew up in Canada is building a couple right now. Phil out in California, you might have seen me helping him, is building this right now. Uh, this is going to be my build of this, and it's going to be, it, it may be a bit different. It may be very, very similar in some respects because I have uh, stolen some techniques from Phil that I'm going to be using as, long as, as well as some tools and some methodology. But this is going to be my build. Now, it's not going to be a regular series. I, I'm not working on this exclusively. I'm going to treat this like a part work build, I think. Uh, this is going to take... A few months to build. My, my goal is to get it done by Thanksgiving. Let's just say I have it done by November. Right now we're at the end of August. That gives me September and October to build this. I think I can get it done in that time. Um, but I'm not going to rush it for any, any uh, artificial deadline. If it takes longer than that, it takes longer than that. Um, but I'm not going to be building on this constantly because I can get burned out and bored with it if I do. So I will be working on this a little bit and then, you know, another project that's maybe more colorful and more simple and less, uh, you know, less problematic than this is going to be. So I'm going to be balancing them. Don't look for me to be building this straight through. Uh, but this is the Enterprise D and yes, it is a big kit. This is as big. Now, you know, my head is almost the same size as Wayne's, but, you know, this is a huge kit. And the first thing we're going to do with this kit is we're going to fix some things. We're going to fix some things on the 3D print. This is a 3D print, and it uses a lot of, the, I'm assuming it's using the same techniques as uh, Keith over at Cosmic Scale Models when you get his 3D prints because they're the same white resin. It's smooth as an Android's bottom. There's gonna be no sanding needed to get rid of any printing artifacts. However, there is going to need to be a bit of work and I will show you best on the bottom saucer here. Let me juggle this. It's another reason why I won't be working on this a lot because it takes up a lot of space and I have to kind of clear the decks to work on it. But if you see in here, well, let me let me pull the camera down here because it's uh, it's gonna be easier than me hold this thing up. One second. Okay, we're back now. This could be a problem with the 3D printing of it. Oh, this piece that you see in here with all this tape. This is the clear uh, lower phaser strip that goes on the outside of the ship, and uh, they're just protecting it that way because it's holding it in place. But this this may be a printing artifact. I don't know, but it's some, definitely something that needs to be addressed before we go any further. You can see cracks right in through here, or gaps where it didn't, uh, where, where the printing didn't, where there's no resin, where the printing didn't go. Uh, see at the base of those windows, and it happens on a lot of these dormers. I'm going to have to take care of that first before we can do anything. That's going to help solidify. Um, also, uh, if you've watched, and now I'm going to reference Phil's videos a lot, I recommend them. Spruverse, uh, the Spruverse Challenge on here on YouTube. Uh, he is a wealth of uh, wealth of information about how to do uh, the things that I'm going to be doing tonight eventually. Um, I will be using the Helios Lighting Kit with some additions to it, with some adaptations. And one of the adaptations is going to be replacing their LED, addressable LED phaser strip with a single strip of uh, addressable LED. That way you don't have to put individual bulbs in there and, and solder them together. You can use it on a strip. It will work, and uh, I've seen it work because Phil's worked. And what I'm gonna be doing is cutting out the space between these bulb holes 
Now, it's going to be narrow like this. It's not going to be, uh, probably not going to be the full width. It might end up being that. My goal is to cut a little channel in between these bulbs and then fill them with the UV resin. Same, uh, same product that I will be using. This is what Phil recommends. Uh, this is light curing putty. I will be using that to fill in all the windows. It gives you a nice diffused look. So uh, that's going to be a ton of work. I've seen Phil do it. His is already done. As a matter of fact, getting back after seeing how much he had done on his kit and getting back here and looking at my kit, I felt like I was back at the base of him, uh, the base of Mount Everest where he had already climbed most of it. Um, there are a, every one of these windows needs to be filled with that resin, and then uh, they're going to be masked and painted, and that's what I was. That's what I was doing last week. I was masking and painting, or masking windows. So part of what I'm doing is uh, computer work. It is creating masks. Even if I myself won't be getting to them right away, I know Phil needs them. Uh, anybody else that's out there building this that might need them, you can contact me. I'll be happy to oblige. Um, but there's a lot of brain work that needs to be done. I am not going to be using the decals that came with this kit. Uh, the decals uh, we have again over on Phil's channel. We have di dissected the uh, shortcomings of those ma of those uh, uh, decals, and we will not be using them. Um, I have generated a new set of markings based on some artwork that I've got from the one and only Rick Sternbach. So if a man knows enterprises, it's Rick Sternbach. I will trust his reference any day. Uh, he says this is so big and it goes in such and such a place by God. That's where I'm going to do it. So um, There's nothing to this but to get started on it and before I start doing any rough housing with this Manhandling these parts. I want to fix those and I think uh, I think the uh, The not the steel stick, but the water weld I think is going to be my best thing It's an epoxy putty and it sets up really quickly and it doesn't shrink. Uh, if I was going to use a uh, uh, a bondo or a um, uh, an epoxy sculpt, that might uh, th those might shrink up a little bit. I think the water weld is going to be my best bet for that because I just need to do some blocking. So let's take care of that. We're going to start this journey. Um, we're going to see how it ends. I'm going to be bouncing all over this ship. I'm going to be doing some parts first. I think I might start on the uh, warp engines first, oddly enough, when it comes time to installing lighting and all of that. So uh, that's my plan for today. It could change a hundred times. Like I said, this is the end of August right now. And um, we are getting ready to uh, leave dry dock. So uh, it's, uh, like I said, the first uh, first video in a, in a series. And um, welcome aboard. Good morning, welcome back. It is uh, day two working on the uh, Big Enterprise D and I am starting the long and tedious uh, task of filling in windows. Now I've studied Phil's technique. I've got the same light curing putty. This is Fun Recall. This is available on Amazon. Um, thinking about sending away in the mail, get sending my box tops sending away to Frozen, ordering directly from Frozen their uh, uh, their putty because it's more of a gel finish. I have done this many windows here, um, still trying out the procedure. I don't know if I like would like the gel any better than this, um, but I'm going to start, uh, I'm going to lay some mask down over that just to see how well that's going to come out. I do like the results that I'm getting when you shine a light up through them. Uh, that's doing what it's supposed to be doing. Um, it's, a, it's a long road ahead to get all of these windows uh, set in. So uh, it's going to be a long journey and I don't expect you to sit there and, and sit there and watch me do it all. So uh, what Phil has told me is that this uh, putty, this particular putty, there, this is the fun recall. Um, he mentioned that this putty is grittier, and it is grittier than the gel paste that uh, Frozen makes. 
and he suggested this for the more dimensional windows where we have a shape we have to retain because it was a, a thicker putty and it was a, easier to keep that shape. I just don't know uh, how long it would take me to get the stuff directly from Frozen. This, I can, like I said, I can order from Amazon. I've already got another tub of this on the way just because I feel like I'm going to use it up. Um, I don't, like I said, I would have to be convinced that the other one was any better than this, though. So I think I'm just going to go ahead and start uh, filling these in. I'm doing a bank of them, a bank of windows at a time, and you can do. I probably should have done this many, many at a time, but uh, until I get more comfortable with it, I'm not going to go nuts. What I'd like to do is get all of these windows filled in before I start cutting this away. This will give me more, I think it will make the, uh, the um, saucer more stable. Now, Phil, again, you're going to hear me talking about Phil a lot because this is uh, what I'm using as my only experience with this so far. So until I get my own experience... I'm going to rely on Phil's, and uh, his recommendation was not to do more than four inches or so of this at a time, cutting it out and then filling it back in and then cutting it out and doing, um, doing that step by step. So uh, what I need to do, now that I'm comfortable with some of these uh, procedures, is I need to take this top piece away and do the bottom not only because it has less windows, but because it has the windows of uh, differing size. And the windows of differing size are the ones I need to hurry up and cut the masks for because Phil is patiently waiting on those. So uh, I've done a lot of brain work. I've done a lot of computer work in the last day or so to get like the... Uh, um, Oh, the, the lifeboat masks and those kind of things cut or uh, get them measured up and ready to cut. Those will all go in these empty spaces or these blank spaces here. So uh, that's where we are to now. I've got a, uh, uh, I'll probably put this to the side today because I've got a, uh, the next, uh, the next package of uh, ET, um, the, uh, the Fan Home ET build to do today. And that'll make a nice break from all of this. Good morning, folks. It's Friday, the last work day of the week, the last work day on the Enterprise D for this week. Um, yesterday, I started doing the windows uh, with the uh, um, this fun recall light curing putty, and it was hit or miss. I was not having a fun time with it. I, I subsequently uh, went online and ordered some of the frozen uh, frozen brand. A frozen gel uh, light curing putty. This is what Phil used in a majority of his saucer windows. It's a little bit easier to work with. It's more of a gel than it is a putty. Um, but uh, so I've ordered that. We'll wait for that to come in. So I've kind of put the uh, uh, saucer to the side, and I'm working on the secondary hall. And this does this stuff here. This fun recall light curing putty works a lot better on these smaller windows. I think it was just trying to get a nice even spread over those large windows that was causing the issue. But here, uh, I haven't had that problem at all. So I've, this morning, already gone in and finished this whole side. And I'm working on the uh, ones on the neck here. That's a lot of uh, buttering and uh, scraping. Stuff that I've learned technique from watching a lot of tile setting on uh, the uh, home improvement shows. So, see, no knowledge is wasted. You may not, uh, you may not be uh, uh, applying it on a daily basis, but when the instance comes up, they say, "Oh, wait a minute! That's just like putting grout on a tile." I can, I can understand that. So basically, what you do is you load some up on your flat, uh, on your flat exacto uh, blade, and you kind of, you just mush it in. Now I've got t uh, clear cellophane tape backing these so that it doesn't go all the way through. And uh, I'll take that off later. But what happens is uh, you kind of cram it into that crevice and then you wipe it off. And if you wipe it off uh, at a uh, 45 degree angle or close to it from the window, you don't end up pulling it back out of the hole. And then once you've got it in there, then it's just a question of just doing a light sand to sandy 
around well I'm sorry there's a step in between you, you push it in here you uh, scrape as much off as you can just by going a nice low level flat and scrape it up across the uh, top of the window like that then you hit it with your you hit it with your uh, UV pen and that cures all of that and then after you've cured it you can do a light sanding and this is with a thousand grit sanding sponge and that just takes the uh, the boogers off of the top surface and uh, it goes pretty quickly on these smaller windows so I can go ahead and get this uh, I'll go ahead and today I'll finish this up and probably do the bottom hull so I'll have all of those windows here you can see the tape I'll go I'll leave this on for a bit and then I can uh, remove it the nice thing about it being clear tape is you can also shine the UV light through it on the back side just in case it's not cured all the way through from the front side sometimes if you put it on too thick the top crust will cure and it will leave uh, uncured resin on the other side so it's good to be able to hit it from both sides but uh, we're going to continue this work and uh, the nice thing about these sponges is that they will go into this contour and they will uh, this inside this inside curve and sand it up nicely now uh, I've ex I've ordered a bunch of tools I've ordered a bunch of tools so that I could kind of match the tools that Phil used. Uh, um, that's all coming within this week or weekend, beginning of next week from Amazon. So uh, I'm not going to rush this work until I have the tools to do it properly. I feel like my chiropractor today because I'm doing a little neck manipulation here. Uh, I've got these details that were missing on the uh, kit that were there on the filming model. So I've got those put in. I've replaced this door. I am uh, on the fence about replacing that door because it doesn't really need it. The only reason I would would be to make it look aesthetically like this one. Um, this was so thin that you could put your finger right straight through it. And while I was sanding it, because I, I was on the fence about even replacing this one, mine was printed a little bit more um, uh, crisply than Phil's was. His, the detail on this part of his was uh, really very soft and washed out and it was obviously needing replacement. Mine was a little crisper. So I was, you know, like I said, I was deciding whether or not to do it when all of a sudden I put my stupid finger through it or uh, was able to break it off. So I said, well, okay, well that just made that decision for me. So I'm going to, sorry, I went ahead and replaced that with uh, some sheet stock got these two guys on here like I said debating about this whether I need to replace that I should probably go ahead and do it just to make it match this one I don't know if I'm going to be well I'm going to cut out the uh, the top one for the shuttle bay so I'm probably going to have to make a uh, replacement for that too that I can you know magnetize in place for when I want the shuttle bay to be um, full or, or, or closed but here we can see the difference between the open windows and the closed off windows here uh, I've got all of this half windows done and I'm deciding again uh, that I mean that didn't take all that long so I'm uh, pondering the idea of going ahead and finishing this side up for today alrighty so I'm back from lunch ready to get into the afternoon's work uh, one thing I did miss whilst I was on vacation was Bojangles. They do not have a Bojangles. Could not get a Bojangles in, in Los Angeles. So, uh, it's been a while, old friend. Glad to have you back in my belly. So, uh, we are, I've got, to, I've got a couple, three hours left before it's time to uh, get ready to upload. So, uh, I think I'm going to try to get as much of this side done with the resin as I can again no not trying to set any uh, any land speed records but uh, we'll see how much more we can get done this this side or the the uh, secondary hall does seem to be going a lot quicker yes and you hear a national weather advisory in the background because it looks like it could be storming this afternoon so uh, let's get on with this continuing to 
put the windows down and the power has already blipped on and off oh two or three times so uh, I don't know how much more we're going to get done today or if the video will go up tonight uh, there it goes again uh, and then there it goes again luckily my camera is on battery power and so is my flashlight so uh, uh, Friday just became a much more interesting day but I think this is as much as we're going to get done unless the uh, well, see, power's back see how uh, unpredictable it is I am not doing this at no time do both of my hands are on the uh, none of them are on the light switch so uh, this is playing havoc with the computer so I can't I'm just gonna leave it off for a while but uh, uh, this is me doing the UV UV curing on all of these lights in the secondary hall Okay, looks like the worst of the storm might have passed, and we still have time to get some more windows done this afternoon. I've got all of this side done. Looks like I could stand to run a sanding sponge over some of this. But you don't need to sit and watch me sand. I can't think of anything more boring than that. So, I won't giving this a little quickie once over here yeah much better okay let's do these ones next and then we'll tackle the ones under that well let's see if we can do this on camera let's tackle these ones first and then see if we can do these well this ends the first of what promises to be many 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 chapters in the building of this beastie uh, I think for our first week we've done a pretty good stab at it. We've got the parts cleaned up. We've got the uh, interior uh, light blocked. We've even got the windows inserted in the secondary hull. So uh, we've got many tools on the way that will help us with the rest. We've got some uh, resin on the way. We've got some putty on the way. And um, we are underway. So... Uh, for our first chapter, we are drawing the curtain, and we'll be back soon with more Enterprise D fun. And we're off. Uh, we're off on this big adventure of the Enterprise D. Uh, like I said before, I probably won't be working on the straight. I might go a couple of weeks on, a week off, and do something else just to keep my fingers nimble and my brain engaged. See what he did there. Um until next week when I will probably be working on something else. I'm waiting for tools to come in and resin to come in on this big girl here. Oh, so big, so big. But uh, I'm not going to rush this one. I'm going to wait for the tools and the and materials to come in. Can't do anything more on it right now, so I might as well work on something else. So until next week when we figure out what that's going to be, y'all be safe, be smart, uh, be good, be good to each other. Be good to yourself, and uh, we'll see you here next time.